Hi guys, welcome back to Crimes and Closets. This is Beth coming at you from a closet in North Carolina. Hey, this is Christy and I'm also still in a closet in North Carolina. Yay, we're still together. We decided to get a couple episodes in while we had each other. Yes. So yes. that we could cheers. Yeah, and we should yes. do that. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Clink. Clink. <laughs> so what's going on with you? Not a whole lot. I mean, we took a change of scenery again and came to North Carolina. So yeah. it's just been nice to visit with my parents and have something else to do, some other walls to look at. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and me, you can look at me. Yes. Um, I almost, today we're at Christy's mom's recording. She was super kind and let us overtake her area. And I wanted to bring her basil because I grow herbs now. All oh, right. Yeah. Because, you know, that's what Southern people do. And you have time. And I have time. And I have all this basil. It's so much basil. It's overtaking all my other plants. And my mint can't get any sun because the basil like bushes at this point are overtaking it. So I was going to bring her some. And there's Japanese beetles eating my basil. Oh, no. And there's hundreds of them. Oh. Okay. So I found them yesterday. And, well, my husband found him, actually. and was like, oh, my gosh. He was going to get basil to cook something at dinner. And there was just Japanese beetles all over them. And I, those things do not let go for anything. And I was for real standing in front of my <laughs> herb garden, screaming at them, <laughs> flicking them off <laughs> with my fingers. And there's hundreds. Man. And they would not come off. And my husband's like... They can't, they don't, like, I love that you're yelling at them because I'm like, oh, no, you are not eating that leaf either. Like, get off if of I it. I still lived across the street from you. I would have loved to have seen them. I was seen. screaming. <laughs> I'm so upset. <laughs> so then it said all the pl all the leaves, I Googled it, and all the leaves that have had them on there, you have to cut oh, because no. they lay their larva. Oh, so don't eat them because you're eating... Japanese beetle babies. Say that 15 times faster. Japanese beetle babies, Japanese beetles. <laughs> Look, I can do that. <laughs> I was a singer, you know? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so just an exercise. <laughs> yeah, so I couldn't bring your mom basil. Oh, sorry, Linda. Well, now it's the only reason she's going to know is because she's hearing this podcast, so she won't be upset in, for well, a maybe couple weeks. Well, may, maybe it will grow back <laughs> and I can bring her you some bring and some put it more. in her mailbox because I pu had to pull all the leaves. So sad. And then I was pulling all the leaves off and the dog was eating the leaves. Oh my gosh, I can't. Well, your dog eats everything. So oh he my ate gosh. a citronella candle the other day. So don't be surprised that he ate. Yeah. <laughs> he really, really did. Eat it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who does, what? I mean, somebody come get him. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. what happened with you? Tell me about your week. Nothing, really. I mean, the rain I in the know beginning what of the happened. week. Yeah. The rain <laughs> in the beginning of the week was kind of cruddy, so we didn't really do much. But then we got to hang out with Beth and go walk some greenways. And Oh, so fun, right? Yes. She's, we a, were... good, she's a good person. I like her a lot. You'd like her, too. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Water... I already like her. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> But we had water balloon fight today. I'm gonna see some family more to family tomorrow. So it's good. Good week. Yeah. And then she's going back. Yes. Back to her My own closet. St. Louis closet. My lonely closet. <laughs> <laughs> You're so glad, aren't you? <laughs> I will be happy to be home. You're yeah. always, it's always nice to be away, but it's always good when you get home. Yeah. Mm. That's so true. I took my mom home earlier this week too, so Yeah. I was glad to get nice back. to have her here. Right? When yeah. you had her here and then nice to be able to go home and a little bit, but also nice to just have your house. <laughs> <laughs> true. I don't know. She's a good babysitter. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Can't hate on her. All right. I got a case for you. I'm excited. It's always. a big one. It's a big case. It's a known case. This case was recommended to me actually twice. Oh, wow. By two different people. My friend Liz recommended this case and then I had a cousin who mm. recommended this case. And so I felt like I had to do it because yeah. it came in twice. It's a really known case. I think there's lots of podcasts done on it that I didn't listen to, but it's really good. So I'm going to tell you today about the case of Kanika Jenkins. Yes. Yay. <laughs> okay. So Miss Kanika 
was a 19-year-old girl who was born May 27th of 1998. 1998. Isn't that funny? Uh, that seems like it was like yesterday, even though it really yeah. wasn't. Like we were graduating high school. We were mm, like in 1998. Was in was, college. You were. Oh, <laughs> you're aging yourself there. She was born in the suburbs of Chicago, Illinois. Mm. Okay. So if you're familiar, familiar with Chicago, Chicago has a lot of crime, but there's really like five areas of Chicago that are responsible for like 90% of the crime mm. that's in Chicago. And one of the areas is on the west side, which is called Lawndale, and that is where Kanika lived. Oh, okay. So she lived in one of those areas that was just a rough area. It just had a lot of crime, wasn't super safe, um, you know, at all. So at the time that our case takes place, she was 19 years old. She was five foot five and 115 pounds. So she's super tiny, super fit, African American girl, beautiful girl. Mm. Like, look up pictures of her. Her smile is so pretty. Mm. Like, she is just, I just love her. Like, and I saw a ton of, you know, they do Facebook lives and um, Snapchat. I don't think TikTok was the thing, but I watched a lot of videos of her just like with her mom and with her friends. And she is so joyful and mm-hmm. sweet and like silly. And I mean, just an, a really sweet 19 year old kid, right? Her nickname was Nika. And she lived with her mom, Teresa Martin, and they were really, really close, like best friends, you know, I mean, just like such a team, such a pair. So obvious in anything that you see, pictures, videos of their bond. She worked two jobs at the time, and she had plans to go to nursing school. Oh, Kanika worked two jobs. Kanika worked two okay. jobs. Yes, sorry. And she had plans to to start going to nursing school. She really loved helping people. She was very smart. And that's what she had decided mm-hmm. that she wanted to do. She loved food. She was like a foodie. Who doesn't? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and she loved her friends and she just liked to have fun and have a good time. She really liked to party and her friends kind of liked to party. Her crowd is like described as like a turn up crowd. So they like to have fun. They like to drink. They like to, you know, Mm -hmm. they like to party. So because they did not live in a super great area, they actually would do most of their parties in hotels. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, right. So they would like rent a hotel room because they didn't want to party on the street. Um, You know, I mean, I guess they didn't want to do it at their house or their parents' house or weren't able or whatever. And so they kind of got out of town and would like rent hotel rooms and... That was just their safe way to party. So on the night of September 8th of 2017, Kanika borrowed her mom's car and she left with some of her friends. She said she was going bowling and then they were going to stop by maybe one of her friend's birthday parties. The old bowling excuse. The old bowling (laughs) excuse. I don't know. They may have actually gone bowling. There's actually no real information about that. But her friend um, Irene was having a party. And her party was at a hotel called the Crown Plaza Hotel, which is in Rosemont, which is another suburb outside Chicago that is like a very nice suburban kind of wealthier area. Mm -hmm. So they leave to go to this hotel in Rosemont to see Irene and Kanika is wearing jeans. She's wearing a crop top shirt, a little denim jacket, white sneakers. She has good sneakers, by the way. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm going to have to go check them. some pictures. You really are. <laughs> like the pictures and videos that I saw of her, she always has on like really, really nice sneakers. I feel like you can feel that. It's like good sneaker game for sure. Mm. Her friends do too. Um, so the party starts at 1130 on the night of September 8th. Oh. However, it's, it's on the... Party. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, I know, right? And it's on the ninth floor of the hotel. Kanika and her friends actually don't arrive until 1.15 a.m. to the party. So that's what makes me think maybe they did go bowling oh, okay. or did they did something. Holy crap. Yeah, super <laughs> oh, late. They're, they're kids, you know. They're very young. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's September 9th at this point. It's 1.15 in the morning, September 9th. Right. Okay. So um, they're partying. Kanika's drinking. Her friends are drinking. Um, There's a ton of Facebook Live videos of this party. A lot of the ones 
that I saw were done by Irene, who was the birthday girl. Okay. And so it's just like her doing a Facebook Live and people coming up to her and like, oh, happy birthday. You look beautiful. I hope you're having fun. So there is, there is, it shows Kanika on these videos a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, she, at one point, comes kind of like stumbling by. She's drinking from a bottle, like not a, you know, she wasn't pouring a drink of something. She was like drinking directly from a bottle. And Irene or someone says, you are drunk. And she's like, girl, I'm not drunk. Which apparently for Kanika is code for... I'm totally wasted. <laughs> Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, it seems like she's super drunk. And around three in the morning, they decide to leave. So this is interesting to me because they were only there an hour and 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. Because they got there at 1.15 right. and it's three in the morning and they're not leaving. So right. I really do feel like they just were kind of stopping by. Mm -hmm. And like when I was thinking in my head, a hotel party I was thinking like I don't know what you pick what do you picture when someone tells you like it's a hotel party that it's just like um like I don't know a huge room w filled with kids but you know I mean you'd have to have a pretty big space I would imagine to have a bunch of people in a hotel room without right. getting in trouble <laughs> oh right same I would think that too but it is not it is seriously like a standard hotel room with a standard bathroom with two like double beds and just sardine cans kids oh packed up in there music blaring i don't even want to be in a room that small with my three kids <laughs> <laughs> right i know right people are like stuffed into the little bathroom and like i mean they're all having a great time but it is real real tiny like i was shocked by that when i saw the facebook lives okay so it's three in the morning they go um her and her friends leave there's mm -hmm. three friends and her and they go to the elevator and kanika is very wasted and she says i forgot my phone and i forgot my keys oh gosh so they're like okay we'll go back and get them so they leave her by the elevator don't leave your drunk friend thank you <laughs> don't leave your friends <laughs> no friend left behind come on yes okay this is this is girlfriend 101 mm -hmm. don't go to parties and leave your friends anywhere don't let your friends leave you anywhere like no Okay, but they do. They're gone about 10 minutes. And when they get back, Kanika has gone. Well, so she clearly. has wandered <laughs> off. She is not there. Right. So they start searching for her. They are walking up and down the hallways. They're checking the elevator shafts. They're going in doors that they can go in, going in stairwells, going all over the hotel. They ask the security for, of the hotel to help them. Mm -hmm. and the security is like i mean I, they said no and they were basically like you guys need to get out of the hallways and they're like we're not going to get out of the hallways our friend is missing like we need your help right. we're not going to get out so it, they looked for almost two hours and finally i think probably because the hotel security was like you have to stop walk just wandering around the hotel we don't want you to do that they were like, oh, hey, well, we don't know what else to do. So they called her mom. You know, I'm just wondering why. I understand they don't want, you know, just a bunch of teenagers wandering hallways. But if they're saying their friend is missing. Yeah. And their kids. Why are they not helping? Like, why, why aren't they helping them? It's true. <laughs> it's exactly. It's You're absolutely right. I mean, and it wasn't a bunch of kids wandering around. It was three girls. Right. Wandering around trying to find their fourth friend. Who is young. They're young kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not talking about 30-year-old people even. They're teenagers. Right. So, right. Ridiculous. So they finally call her mom around 5 o'clock in the morning. Her mom, of course, frantically, I'll be right there. So she comes to the hotel. She gets there about 5.30. And she goes to the hotel security. And she's like, my daughter's missing. We don't know where she is. She never went back to the party. And she's like, I, you need to look at your surveillance like she's in this hotel mm. she's somewhere you need to go find your surveillance so the hotel security is like we can't really we can't look at the surveillance and release the surveillance to you until a missing persons report is filed Ugh. so she's like okay fair so she calls the police i need to file a missing person report my daughter's been missing so the police is like 
you have to wait. <laughs> well, they didn't say you have to wait. They said, why don't you wait? Why don't you just wait and see if she turns up? Because, you know, there's reports that she was drunk. You don't think she left the hotel. There was a party. She's a kid. She'll turn back up. She probably fell asleep somewhere. Just wait. So the mom is like, no, I'm not waiting. No one's helping her. So she literally starts walking around the hotel, banging on the doors of the guest. No, that's not true. She wasn't banging on the doors of the guest. She was knocking on the doors and saying, my daughter's missing. Have you seen her? Here's a picture of her. Yeah, good for her. She was in this hotel. Okay, well, the hotel is like, you can't be doing that. You can't be disturbing our our guests. So they call the police. Well, they call the police on her? They call the police on her. They called 911. Lord have mercy. That she's disturbing the guests. So the police come and then finally are like, okay, we'll do a missing persons report. So at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, they finally do a missing persons report. So... When they filed the missing persons report, the police start investigating. They start investigating her as a missing person. So they interviewed the guests of the party, all the ones they could find. They, like, started with the person who reserved the room, started with whose birthday it was, trickle, 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 you know, down. And during all of these interviews that are going on, they are pulling the surveillance. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine a hotel, I mean, they're on the ninth floor. So this is a big hotel in Chicago. And there are different cameras for every hallway, different cameras for every conference room. So it's a ton of stuff to piece together. So this is like hours and hours and hours of very painstaking, boring work. Mm -hmm. But they start the process. They do start doing that. So they interview, they do 44 interviews and 36 of the interviews are people who attend the party, who all claim she was there claim she was drinking she was with these people this is what she was wearing she left at this time and um we we didn't see her after she left she was gone so they're also at the same time searching the hallways searching the stairwells searching the conference rooms doing all that stuff so this long process of all of the searching is going on and just after midnight that night, the night that they start searching, so it's actually September 10th at this point, they find Kanika, a, a hotel manager, finds Kanika in the basement of the hotel in a walk-in freezer. Oh my gosh. Like frozen. Dead. Ugh. Crying so out she is pronounced dead at 12.48 a.m., which is 17 hours after she is... Like, they know her to be missing. So, um, she's found in the front corner of the freezer. Mm -hmm. She's on her left side. Her left arm is underneath her. And she's kind of face down in, like, the corner of the freezer that's facing the door. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. So like you're looking at the door. She's to the left of the door. Her head is to the left of the door and she's like laying in front of the door. She is wearing the same clothes that she was reported wearing the whole entire night. She has like this crop top and the crop top is like pulled up a little bit so that it's like you can kind of see her bra. Okay. Okay. So and then she's got like a like a hair tie, like not a scrunchie, but like a one of the elastic hair ties mm -hmm. behind her. And then in front of her is like a tube of lip gloss. Mm -hmm. Then she, her right shoe is off. Her right sock is off. And there are like abras abrasions and scratches on her right foot. Like on the side of her right foot. The one with the shoe off. The one with the shoe off. Okay. And she's like dirty... But the floor of this freezer is, like, so gross. Mm. Like, it doesn't show you the whole entire floor, but it does show you, like, pictures of, like, her and up-close pictures of her shoe and of her foot. And it's, like, filthy. So she's dirty. Like, her shoes. Mm. She had white sneakers on, so they're, like, very dirty and scuffed. So it looked like she was, like, rolling around in there or something. Like, it's mm. very strange mm -hmm. to me to, to see the, the pictures. I don't know. Okay, so like I mentioned, the cooler is in the basement. The freezer is in the basement of this hotel. So she's started on the ninth floor. 
now is in the basement and it's attached to a kitchen and the kitchen is vacant. It's an mm -hmm. unused kitchen. So it's like completely bare. I, I mean, dirty, unused in the bottom of this hotel. Mm -hmm. So they did the lights in the freezer were off and the door was shut, but both the lights and the door's safety mechanism to get out were functioning. So she could have turned the lights on from inside the freezer. And the way that the door opens, it's like a you push it in mm -hmm. and then turn it. Okay. And it opens that way. So you can't just like pu push the door and it will open. You do have to like kind of – it would probably take you a minute to figure it out, mm -hmm. I guess. But it was working. But they, I mean, they even videoed it working. Right. In working order when they found the body. So – so here they go. Now, what happened to this girl? How did she get there? So they start piecing together the surveillance footage. And this process takes days. So at 3.05 a.m., Kanika and her friends are seen on the ninth floor coming out of the hotel room where the party was and standing by the elevator. Right. You can then see her friends leave and Kanika is still there. After like two, a minute or two of her still being there, she just walks off and like walks down the hallway. She is visibly drunk, mm -hmm. visibly impaired. She is like banging into the wall, holding on to the wall, um, staggering, like swaying back and forth. She's like leaning backwards, you know, that like drunk mm -hmm. lean. She does that. Um She's definitely impaired for sure. And she just roams around the hotel for almost an hour. And she's seen in multiple. She's like, seen in all videos. kinds of places. She's in stairwells. She's in hallways. And I watched almost all of this. And it it's very weird because it looks, and I know she's drunk or, you know, impaired or whatever, but like, she looks like she's looking for something mm -hmm. like she was going indoors and then shutting the door. Was she looking for her three friends? At uh, possibly, yeah. possibly, or, or maybe for the party again. Uh, I don't true. know. She doesn't try to go in like hotel rooms, mm -hmm. but like she'll go into like the vending thing, you know, mm -hmm. like where the ice is and stuff. And she'll go in and like shut the door and then open the door and then come back out. And then she'll like, walk across the hallway and try to go in one door and then come back and try to go in another door. And it's like she's seen mm -hmm. back and forth crossing over the surveillance footage and then leaving that hallway. And then she'll go in another hallway and she'll do the exact same thing. And then she'll go in a stairwell. So then finally she makes it to the basement. She goes down the stairwell and makes it to the basement and is seen walking through this vacant kitchen and like kind of holding on to the um, – metal you know like counter things mm -hmm. that they have and like going around and walking in the direction of the freezer well after that there's no more surveillance cameras so the surveillance camera like is like a global thing of the kitchen so she's seen coming in the kitchen walking by the camera continuing walking and going into the part where there's the freezer and then nothing and then is there anybody yeah. ever on this the cameras yeah so it? no there's no one else on the so the camera is a motion activated camera, so when when motion comes, it's like a, you know, like what we have in our backyards mm -hmm. or whatever. Like if somebody walks by, it clicks on and starts recording, and then, you know, it records for a minute or whatever. And if there's no more motion, then it goes off. And there was no other motion on this camera until the hotel manager comes in to search the kitchen and finds mm -hmm. her, and then there's like a flurry. And I watched all that too. I watched him come in. I watched him look around. I watched him, you know, go back there. He comes running back out, gets police. Police come running. They're radioing. We found her. We found the suspect or, you know, the subject. Mm -hmm. And she's frozen solid. Okay. So the autopsy that they had done, um, the reports are that there's no signs of a struggle. There is no external trauma. There's no sexual assault. Um, she had a blood alcohol level of 0.112. Mm. 
So the legal limit is 0.08. Mm-hmm. So she was intoxicated. They also found a drug in her system called to- topim- topiramite. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so this drug is a prescription medication that is used to tre- treat epilepsy by preventing seizures and migraine headaches. Did she have a prescription? Okay. So she did not have either of these conditions. She did not suffer from migraine headaches. She did not have epilepsy or any seizure disorder whatsoever. And she was not prescribed this medication. Mm. But the levels of it that they found in her were how they describe therapeutic. So it wasn't like she had, like, say the recommended dose is 10 milligrams. She had 10 milligrams. Mm. She didn't have, like, 50 milligrams. Right. So she wasn't she didn't overdose over-medicating, it, yeah. I guess, or whatever with this drug. This is not a party drug. It is okay, not so a party drug. It, no, this drug. is not a recreational it a drug. It is not something that you would take to feel good in any way. Mm-hmm. It is something that almost like like puts you to sleep, mm-hmm. basically. Like it's not you're not gonna take it for like, woohoo, let's party and take this drug. Right. Okay. So the cause of death Uh, was ruled hypothermia and intoxication from alcohol and the medication that was in her system. So the death was ruled accidental. So the case was closed on October 20th of 2017, and it was said that there was no signs of foul play. Mm. Okay. So they held a memorial service, and... This is probably what you have heard about. It was a very big memorial service. There was over a thousand people in attendance. There were people outside. There was a lot of protesting going on. Um, it, it became a real, like, publicized case. Mm-hmm. And it became really controversial as well because of all of the theories and all of the rumors and things that were seemingly mishandled and coming into play that, um, They feel like they don't really know what happened to her and what they're being told happened to her is not what happened. Mm -hmm. So I will get into all of those right after this break. Hey guys, this is Christy and Beth from Crimes and Closets, and we are just two moms that love true crime podcasts. And so we just thought, hey, why not try and make one of our own? But we had zero knowledge or experience in doing that. And then we found Anchor. Guys, Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It's totally free. There's cool creation tools that allows you to record and edit the podcast right from your phone or computer. It'll distribute your podcast to any platform that you choose, including Spotify and Anchor. And you can actually make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership required. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So if you're as into it as we are, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm. That's anchor.fm to get started. We'll see you in the closet. Okay, so the first strange thing that I want to talk about is this medication that is found in her system. Right, yeah. Okay, so this drug, topiramate, is an anticonvulsant medication that is also used for nerve pain and to prevent seizures and to prevent migraine headaches. Okay, so I looked this up, and the side effects of this medication are tiredness, drowsiness, dizziness, loss of appetite, loss of coordination, and tingling in the hands and feet. Those are the main side effects. I mean, some of those actually could be classified as drunk as well. You know, you know like you get tired, you get loss of coordination. Loss of coordination. Like, I mean, not a good mixture then. Huh? Right. Okay. <laughs> so it does say in relation to mixing with alcohol, and I'm quoting, avoid very serious interactions can occur. Hmm. Okay. But the weird thing about this is, well, it's weird because she didn't have seizures and she didn't have migraines right. and she didn't have this medication and it's not a party drug. But also what's weird is although Kanika is known for somebody who really does like to party and she certainly isn't ashamed of that. And she, you know, 
she liked to have a good time and party. She hated pills, mm. hated them, and was like, apparently everyone knew this. Like she didn't like taking them for any reason, whether it be because she needed them or recreationally, nothing. Like it was just not her thing. She didn't like it. She just did not like pills Mm -hmm. in any way. So the fact that she would voluntarily take this pill, which is not a fun pill to take anyway, and then drink on top of it, they find as very strange. Right. So it's, a lot of people's theory in her family and her friends that someone put this in her drink. Yes. Well, and that was my thought. And did, and and I don't know if you know this, but did they, you know, interview everybody? I know they interviewed people that they could find. And did anybody have this as a prescription? No, nobody claimed that they did. The other weird thing about it too, that I do find about that is in the Facebook live videos and everyone else's report, she's drinking out of the bottle. Mm. So like, it's not like she had a cup right? and somebody yeah. walked by and dropped one in a cup. Mm-hmm. They would have had to have put it in the bottle. True. And then mm. she would have had to have drank the whole bottle right, to in get order to dose. get all of that dose of medication. Right. So I think that's a strange theory. Um, and it also means that her friends did this to her, which some people think right. that did happen. Um, it's It's definitely one of the theories. It's super weird. Mm -hmm. that she had this medication and I mean I didn't know her but I feel like I don't think she would have voluntarily taken this I mean I don't know I think it's very strange so to add to that theory of something happening at the party is all of these Facebook live videos that are done by Kanika they're done by her friends they're done by other people that are at the party and um, I went on in a rabbit hole Mm. watching these Facebook live videos. And there are so many reports of like odd things happening in these Facebook. I mean, there's hours of them Mm -hmm. and you, you know, it's like, Oh, right here. It says this. And right here it says this. And you're like listening to that one part over and over and over again to see if you can hear it. Some of it I did hear clear. Like there's one part of it where, um, you can hear and it's right after, Kanika is right there and she says that she's not drunk. Mm -hmm. It's right after that. Somebody in like a really high pitched mousy kind of voice says, help me. Oh, Yeah. So, I mean, but like playfully, right. You can't tell. tell. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely like, help me like that. So uh, maybe, I don't know. Who is it? I don't know. I mean, some people say that they can see in, um, the girl who's doing the Facebook Live shut on sunglasses. Oh, mm-hmm. And some people say you can see a reflection of Kanika and a guy. I couldn't really see that. But I I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't there. I just feel like it wasn't something I could see easily. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. So that's weird. Um, there's also like somebody says there's reports that like you can hear somebody screaming like not in a playful way and like a um, they're being hurt Mm -hmm. or something is happening to them. And then at that exact time when you can hear, like actually hear it, somebody reaches over and turns the music up Oh, to like drown it out or whatever. I don't know about that. I mean, I maybe kind of heard it, I think. And I definitely saw somebody turn music up. Um, The room was so small though. Mm Mm-hmm. And there were so many people in it that there's no way if something was happening to one person that they wouldn't have seen it. Right. Which means that all 50 people in that hotel room were in on it and have kept the secret. Yeah. So I just don't know if that's a real thing. Um, There's even like some conspiracy theories that some of her friends feel really strongly about actually this, which was really interesting to listen to interviews. There's a part in the video where somebody talks about having like $200, exchanging $200. There's like this magic $200 number. And there are actually rumors that this was like a black market hit where they were like going to kill her to and put her in the freezer to like conserve her organs to sell them on the black market. And it was for $200. Like and somebody that's what in the that two, room. Yeah. Yeah, somebody that they knew, somebody that was at the party, 
it was a plan to pick somebody at the party. Oh, so random. So she just who was drunk. a random person that they picked. So right. Well, I don't know. Specifically. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Um, again, I feel like that's kind of a weird theory because it's like all the people at the party would have to know. They would have to know that the friends were going to leave her. Right. Yeah. At that time. Um, then the the people when they're interviewed about this, like the face the people that are on the Facebook live video, they say that they're talking about two hundred dollars because that's how much the hotel charged if you lost your parking ticket. Okay. Which it is. Mm-hmm. It was confirmed that if you lose your parking ticket in the parking garage, you have to pay a fine of two hundred dollars. And it's like written on a sign outside in the parking. So they say that's what they were talking mm-hmm. about. But we don't know. The other thing that somebody brought up in an interview, which I thought was also interesting, is like these kids were most of them from the same area, which was like kind of the um, the more, you know, like the the not as good parts of Chicago, like the bad areas. And there was a high rate of crime there and there was a high rate of murder. So like if they were going to do that, if they were going to do something to Kanika shady or hurt her or murder murder her they would not take her to a wealthy suburb and do it in a hotel room way outside of the town where it's more common with surveillance cameras everywhere and witnesses everywhere because there was people at the party right So, like if it was something planned that's not how they would plan it and is there any speculation or knowledge that she was having issues with like friends i mean were, were no. these people that she got along with really well? Or yeah. Did, yeah. So. Yeah. Why would that And these sense? were her friends at the party. I mean. Yeah. yeah. No. That's a good question. No. There's no reports of her like anyone having a problem with her. Like, or well, Kanika went to a party with a bunch of people that don't like her anyways. You know, like if that's not the right. case. then <laughs> Or there was issues with somebody yeah. there. No. Nothing is said of that. Which again, maybe they're not telling the truth. These people at the party. Who knows? Mm-hmm. You know, we just don't know. I mean, these are all just like theories that her family and friends have. Um, about what happened to her. So another theory that her mom, you know, really, I think this is, this is her feelings on it is that somebody in the hotel, a worker possibly saw her wandering around drunk, attacked her maybe with the hopes of raping her, um, you know, or something and put her in the freezer for whatever reason. And she just wasn't able to get out either because she was too intoxicated to get out or too, or they hit her, you know, knocked her out in some way. Um, Potentially maybe they were the cause of her having this medication in her system. And then, you know, the hotel that was kind of like, they kind of helped cover it up, I guess. Mm -hmm. They did not want to be liable for that or for having an employee who did that or for allowing that to happen on their premise, the foul play. And so that's why they kind of delayed everything and were seemingly kind of shady about it. That is an interesting theory, I think. But in order for that to happen, the police would have had to have been in on the cover-up, I think. Mm. And the surveillance video would have had to have been altered. Right. Because somebody else would have been there. Right, yeah. But her mom is very adamant that she could not have opened that door by herself, especially because she was as drunk as she was. Right. You're saying she had to push and then like turn it. Like, and how would she even know? Well, that's to get out. Oh, that's to To get get in. It was just a door. It was just a freezer door, you know? So, but her, but it's heavy. It's a heavy heavy. freezer door. She's a tiny little thing. Kind of, you know how they like suction almost. They do. So it's a little hard to push. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yes, exactly. And like, why was that freezer even on? Right, because it was in a, a vacant used kitchen. kitchen. Yeah, I think that's even weird. Nobody talks about that, but I think that's super weird. Yeah, I that is really weird. But it's also to me, it's also really weird. How did she even get down to the basement? Like, if nobody's leading her, like she's literally just wandering and somehow ends up in the basement. Like, well, I've thought about that too. So she gets in the stairwell. She's looking for her friends. She starts walking down and she just keeps walking Mm -hmm. down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then when she gets to the bottom and there's no more stairs, she goes out the door. Right. So I don't think that is real super far-fetched, but like it is weird. Mm -hmm. There's just, there are weird things. I mean, some other weird things, which I find are so super. Oh, wait, I did want to say this about the, um, 
altering the surveillance. So allegedly, in the documentary that I watched about this case, they called in audio experts to review the surveillance footage from the hotel. And the way that this surveillance footage was set up, the way that it ran, was motion, like I was saying. And they said, these experts said that, and it was more than one expert, said that um, there is no way to splice and alter a video like that, that the tools to do that right now literally don't exist. Oh. Like okay. they have no way of doing it. I don't know how much I believe that because I really feel like they can do anything. Like I know. I, even in my own head, I'm like, I could probably figure out how to download my Ring video and splice that. I know. Wouldn't that be interesting <laughs> to do that? <laughs> yeah, it would be really interesting. So, But also what's super weird is that her shoe was off. I mean, that to me is like, the white, the elephant in the and room. And her sock, right? Her shoe and her sock are right. off. So she just took one off? And she un... Yeah. And she un... Like, took things out of her pockets. Oh, yeah. Because the lip gloss and the hair tie. <laughs> yeah. Like, those things were on her person and then weren't. So, like, if that, there was no struggle... Yeah. Right. Did she have a purse of some sort? Like, a small... She didn't. Because I was just thinking, like, that's almost like when somebody grabs something and just things just fly in a direction. No. No. Yeah. No, she didn't have any type of handbag or purse or backpack um, in any of the surveillance that I saw of her walking around the hotel. She didn't have anything like that. And she isn't um, – like, remember how I said that she looked, it was she was kind of dirty? Mm -hmm. She's not like that in any of the surveillance. Yeah, so how does that prove that there's no struggle? Because I feel like if you're all of a sudden very dirty, then you you must have struggled or rolled around in that blood. <laughs> right, okay. So, well, but if you're, if you're freezing to death. Well, that's true. Like, I don't feel like that is – crazy to think that that would happen but like so and there's also this thing called paradoxical undressing have you ever heard of this mm -mm. so it's a it's something that people who are suffering from hypothermia do where they it's like in the fairly early stages of hypothermia where they feel like they're burning mm -hmm. they feel like they're like burning up and like on fire but really they're freezing to death and so what they'll do is undress mm -hmm. you know they'll start they'll they feel like they're hot and so they'll take their jacket off or their – okay, but she didn't take her jacket off. She, she took, took her off. shoe off. Mm -hmm. And then what? Passed out before she could get to the rest of her? That would not be the first thing you would take off if you were hot. No, that's not the first thing that – like just naturally you go to what's closest to your hands. Right, so and she don't... had on a denim jacket. Oh. Okay. So there's all these theories that are, you know, valid in their own ways. The one thing that I do know for sure – I don't know about these theories. I don't know how she ended up in that freezer. I really don't. I mean, and I watched and watched and watched, and it really is so strange. So I don't know. I don't know what happened to her. But I do know that from the very beginning, her case was not taken seriously. Her disappearance was not taken seriously. The fact that she was drunk in a hotel room and missing was not taken serious. Mm -hmm. And had it been and they found her, she may have been alive. Right. She may still be alive. Yeah. And I mean, I really think it was just, they were so dismissed because they were these teenage, you know, African-American girls who were drunk at a party in a white neighborhood in Chicago and they didn't want to be bothered with them. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe them or they didn't care or whatever. But this girl froze to death in their freezer because they would not act. And even the police. Right. You know, oh, well, you can't have the surveillance because you have to file a missing person report. But don't file a missing person report yet. And then arrest the mom who's looking for the person that she yeah. tried to well, file. Well, they didn't miss arrest her. Oh, well, they called the police and they... Yeah. Okay. So Which I'm actually that. glad they did that because right. the fact that they it. called the police, it actually... They were finally like, okay, lady, we'll let you file a missing person right. report. Like, you're clearly not going to shut up about it. Right. So I am glad that that happened, but it's ridiculous that it had to be that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That, that all that had to happen, and it was hours and hours and hours later. Mm -hmm. And 17 hours she was in that freezer. Oh and like, I, I don't know if you know anything about hypothermia, but like your hypothermia sets in when your body temperature is at 95 degrees. So oh, you have wow. three degrees. I didn't know Three that. degrees That's and you're dead. A lot. No. It takes a lot right. to get there, but three degrees is all it takes, and you're dead. You're gone. Wow. 
my yeah. gosh. So her, the Jenkins family has filed a lawsuit. They filed a lawsuit in 2018 against the hotel seeking $50 million in damage, damages in like a civil wrongful death suit. Mm. So that's all still pending and, you know. But they're not looking into this case anymore because they no, ruled it's closed. it accidental. Yep, it's closed. It closed a month after wow. she was found. Yeah. And the police actually released all of this surveillance. They, I mean, because the public was so upset. Mm-hmm. And so they were like, we want to be as transparent as possible. I mean, if I hate that the surveillance is out there. I mean, I'm glad because I feel like, you know, for me, a researcher, it was, everything was right there at my fingertips. Mm-hmm. There was Facebook Live videos. There was, you know, all the hotels, all the hotel surveillance, all of it. I watched surveillance of her friends looking for her. I watched surveillance of her mother going and knocking on the guests and frantically searching for her daughter. I watched it all. It's all there. And, but it's awful because it's like her last moments. It's mm-hmm. so eerie watching her alone oh, gosh, in this yeah. hotel room, stumbling around with no, looking for her friends with no one to help her. And then thinking about her laying in that freezer, like anyway, it's a heartbreaking case. Yes, so. It is. I, it is. I have definitely heard this one before and it, this is, it's just so strange. There is so much footage and it's like, yeah, I guess with all that footage, there isn't anything that looks like foul play on it. So you naturally would go to, well, she must've just wandered in there, but there's just too many little things that yeah, I mean, question it. And yes, you can explain them away, I yeah. think, but what happens when you add them all up? I yeah. don't know. You know, I don't know. I really don't know what happened mm-hmm. to her. I mean, I know what I saw. Right. I know what they say the autopsy said. Right. But I don't know. Yeah. But like you said, the biggest thing is that if somebody had taken them seriously from the beginning, there's a really good chance that she would still be here yep. having another party. At yeah. I mean, it was just a couple hours. Mm-hmm. And she had been wandering around for an hour. Right. So like it was four something when she went in there. Her mom got to the hotel at 530. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Had they taken the mom seriously at 530 right. and just looked everywhere. Yeah. She was still wandering around when they were asking hotel security to help them. It's crazy. Yeah. So. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So you can follow this case. Um, There's a, like, you know, tons of social media justice for Kanika things that you can still follow if you want to follow the um, family's case with the hotel and all that stuff. So. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Anyway. Well, thanks for that one. You're welcome. It's a good one. Oh, I liked, I hate saying I liked that one. <laughs> it seems so weird. I liked hearing that story you just told me. It's like a bedtime story. <laughs> For the sick and twisted. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, so weird. Yep. But anyways, it was good. It was a good one. Very interesting. And I, I think I will for sure be following. I'll be interested to see how the family does with that case with the hotel. That'll yeah. Interesting to watch, but... As always, we appreciate y'all listening to us um, and love hearing from you. So please find us on Instagram and Facebook at Crimes and Closets and email us, crimesandclosets at gmail.com. And also, oh yes, you mentioned the voicemail last week. So you should definitely send us voice messages on Anchor if you go to Anchor. That's only through the Anchor site, so it's a little bit different, but still very easy to do. Um, and as always, the world is scary. People suck. Hide in your closets. Bye guys.